What's up guys, Pat here with Bleepin' Jeep. Today we're gonna show you our cheap Dana 60. This is the cheapest way to get one tons under your rig, in my opinion. I think this is gonna be the most cost effective, most bang for the buck, right out of the box. What we're looking at here is a 2005 plus Dana 60. This axle is offered from the factory in F250 and F350 trucks from 2005 up. It uses a 35 spline inner shaft and a 35 spline outer shaft, as opposed to the predecessor of this axle, which used a 30 spline outer shaft. 30 spline shaft on the old style axle can be upgraded to 35 spline shaft, chrome molly shaft, RCV, but that's a lot of money just to get to where this is here. With the 35 spline shaft, it's gonna be a little bit bigger diameter, and that's gonna give you just a little bit more strength. A 40 inch tire, I think, this is gonna be able to handle it fine. It comes with these fantastic hubs. They're very easy to take apart, very reliable. And uh, you know, if you've got to change one on the trail, it's not gonna be a huge deal. We'll show you how to take these apart. You'll be surprised how simple it is. Inside of this is a reverse cut nine and three quarter inch ring gear. There's kind of a curved side on your ring gear, if you, on the teeth of your ring gear, if you look at it, and then there's a flat side. So when you're driving, this actually drives the flat side. So you're gonna get a lot better contact with the reverse cut. Also with the reverse cut gear set, you've got high pinion. And that's gonna improve your drive line angles, which that's gonna be better for your U-joints, better for your drive shafts, keeping you off the rocks, everything like that. It's gonna be great. There are a number of aftermarket upgrades for this. You could go bigger U-joints, you can go bigger shafts, inner, inner and outer, you could go 40 spline. Uh, Crow Molly, RCV, all kinds of upgrades for this. Rock bouncers are using them. There's ball joint eliminators. So a very versatile axle, uh, very upgradable axle, but it's very inexpensive to get into this for what you get. For $400 or $500, these axles are made to go under a huge diesel truck with a big heavy frame, big heavy body, stopping power it needs to stop 13,000 pounds. So I think this is gonna be the perfect axle to go under our Jeep. There are a ton of trusses for this as well. Uh, a lot of companies make a truss for this axle. So we went with a Pro Series truss from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. We're gonna show you how to install that today. And we chose that truss because it gives us a nice flat surface to mount things, track bar mounts, uh, upper link, um, and it also works in conjunction with the full hydro mount that they sell. So we will be running full hydro on the Lamazine. I know that's not the cheapest option, but for the money, the extra money that you spend on full hydro, I think it's going to be well worth it. Well worth it as opposed to trying to fit everything in here with conventional steering. Full hydro is going to be the way to go for us. So stick with us today, guys. We're going to show you how we do this, and uh, we'll start by taking this axle apart. First thing we're going to do is remove the three screws on the hub. Then we'll remove our brake rotor. Next is your ABS sensor. Make sure not to hurt this if you want to run your ABS. Tap this hub and that'll come out. Use a little chisel and you can pry it out. There you go. Check your seals. This is a vacuum actuated hub, which means when it's set to automatic mode and not manual lock mode, um, it uses a vacuum to lock the four-wheel drive in. If there's any dirt in those seals, it's not going to operate. So if this is on your stock F250 or F350, um, you're going to want to check those seals very diligently. Next is this snap ring. Let's do it. Speedwalks 9-inch external snap ring pliers. Solid spring removal tool. They're a little bit bigger than the snap ring pliers we had, but that's just a little bit we needed. Next thing we're going to do is undo the four unit bearing bolts on the back of the unit bearing. Take one of the nuts and put it back on a stud. You're just going to screw this down until it's flush with the end of the stud. There you go. Now we'll put our socket. We'll take the socket off of there. Cool, and that nut has a flange on it. Here's one right here. So the socket can't go over it. 
So when we smack it with this hammer, it'll come right out. Now you can remove the unit bearing. Man, so the hub looks good. Everything looks nice in here. A little greasy. We'll clean all this up. Next thing we're going to do is pry out this axle shaft. You'll get this crowbar wedged in there. And you'll just pry like this. Excuse you. Oh, beautiful. Let me see their shaft. Very nice. 35 spline shafts. Choncho the cat making an appearance. So I went hub, <laughs> internal snap ring, the nuts on the back of the unit bearing, and then we pried this dude out. Let's flip it around and do the other side. Maybe we'll do a time lapse. Just out of curiosity, we want to see just how much this stuff weighs, just the stuff that we've taken off this far. So let's weigh it. Let's see what the grand total is. There it is, 180 pounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I believe it. That's all, that's a grown man worth of freaking beef. Hold on, now I'm curious. I wanna see how, how much these weigh. What's your total guesstimate? That stuff alone is 180. I'm gonna go, I think these are at least 30 pounds a piece. 240? 240? Okay. What are you, plus minus 240? We'll do who's closest. Yeah, how about that? I'm gonna go with 239. All right, you dog. That's a gamble right there. I'm throwing the cotter pins in. Matt was asking what our purpose was for taking this axle apart and weighing it. We just wanna show you guys how much weight you can save for moving it around the shop and while you work on it, trust it, rolling it over, getting it from the spool down to the ground. Um, Every little bit helps. You'll see how much we actually take off here. Now, the nut is on here, right? So I can smack it and this will drop, but it won't fall on the floor and break my toes. I wanted to give us a little bit of trouble. If you guys have any tips for getting the nut off of a ball joint that just wants to spin, leave it in the comments. That's annoying as heck. How did they expect you to get that off there? There's got to be a way. Suck it, nut. Two hundred and forty five point eight pounds and all the guts are still in here so I mean good lord I think little sticky was right I said what one two forty one you, you said, said two forty I don't think that's how it went down I we're think gonna have to so. rewind the tape now that the axle is all the way apart cleaned off you could have done this with all the stuff on it but like i said it's easier to roll around on this spool without it so the barnes truss just goes right together guys it's all keyed and notched and as far as orientation on the axle you're just going to want to line up this breather hose with the hole on top of the truss really couldn't get a whole lot easier guys if you can put together a first grade level puzzle you can put together this truss All right, guys, now that we've got our truss mocked up, just going to burn in a couple of little small light tacks. That way, when we take it off, we don't have to play jigsaw again and get it all back together. Now our 
our truss will stay together. We move it around, do whatever we need. Just light tax, guys, because if you've got to get these off, you don't want them to be permanently burned in. Tack everything. But then don't forget to finish weld it, also important. Let's get into our full hydro kit. Each one of these parts is laser etched with a part number. Let's say you jack one up and you cut it up and you can't get it to work, you thought you could, and you say, hey man, I need a new part. Well, what was it? You don't want to order this whole kit. There's your part number. Now we've got our truss tacked up and in place, we can start dealing with our full hydro mount and putting this together. Barnes makes it really easy. Everything keys together, super nice. The best part about it is there are instructions on their website of how this all keys together. But if you look at the stuff, it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. So you just put everything in place. Come on. We'll put everything in place. So before we weld or tack anything, we're just going to take a healthy dose of acetone and wipe things down. That way you can get any contaminants off and that'll give you a cleaner weld. If you really wanted to, you could grind this stuff down, but I think this metal's in good enough shape to where it's not going to be a huge deal. Cool. Next step you're gonna do is take your access skid and your flange and bolt these together. Yeah, so the recessed side goes on the outside. Now we've got it all bolted up. We're gonna set it in place, see where it makes contact and clean up everywhere that we're gonna tack weld this or weld this with our acetone. If anyone wants to send Amy some PPE, let us know what you got. Everything we have is too big for this little booger. <clears throat> but when you wear my welding overcoat, you look like you ain't wearing pants. And that's how you get the likes. Next step, we're gonna mount our winch pull-down tab, and you're just gonna line it up with the three holes on the front of the ram mount. Make sure these are perfectly lined up, then tack them in place. So this is how you should be looking at this point. The next step, we're gonna put our tie-in bracket and our tab together. That will sit on top of your tie-in bracket. So now you just place a tack underneath here. So we don't have our PSC full hydro stuff yet, but your ram will mount right here. And the arms come out of the ram to the tie rods that go out to your high steer arms. But that way everything is up, out of the way, protected. This thing couldn't go together any easier. Still got a little bit of space right here that we need to clearance so that we can make contact with our tube. Not a huge deal. All right guys, we just showed you how to tack into place our Barnes four wheel drive full hydro steering mount onto our Pro Series truss for our Dana 60. Stay tuned, next week we're gonna be throwing this axle underneath the Jeep, measuring for our three link kit. We're gonna be using the Barnes three link kit along with the Barnes high steer arm. So stay tuned, we've got videos on that coming up. Thanks for following guys. If you're not a Patreon subscriber to Bleepin' Jeep already, make sure you go check that out at bleepinjeep.com. 
You can also like, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell on this video. That helps us out a lot, guys. Thank you for watching, and most of all, stay sticky out there.